In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you what a compressor is, as well as show you some of the compressors just released in Ableton Live 9. The point of compressing is to reduce dynamic range. Now, what is dynamic range? Well, it's the ratio between the loudest and the quietest sounds in your song. So I flattened down some audio of before and after compression. Now, if you look at the top one, the one that's uncompressed, you can tell the difference between the loudest and the quietest points. A lot of the beef is around here when a lot of the hits of the drum and other percussion might be a little louder. Now, let's look at the compressed one. You can tell, obviously, everything's louder in the second track. That's due to making the dynamic range smaller, which is basically turning down those drum hits for a brief moment and turning up the volume of the rest of the track. This is also known as downward compression. And what that is, is reducing volume over a threshold that you can see right here. Now let me go over some of the controls. First you have the ratio, attack, release, threshold, knee, and the makeup gain, which is here for automatic makeup gain, or down here for manual makeup gain. So this is a compressor I made to limit some of the peaks in my song. Let me just go over a few things with it. This dot represents the current volume of the track. Every time it goes above this little circle, or the threshold, it's going to start compressing. If it's down really low, then it's always compressing all the time. But right here, it's just compressing some of the time, because it's only sometimes above the circle. Basically only at the really loud points. This shows you the same information from the other screen, just at a different view. This line I'm moving is still the threshold. The attack is an amount of time, usually in milliseconds. Once your track reaches a specific volume, or the threshold, the attack tells it how long to wait before starting to compress. So if you turn the attack up too high for something like a kick or a snare, then it won't start compressing until after the initial hit. It's important to remember that this kind of compressor, which is a downward compressor, only starts working above the threshold, and everything below the threshold is untouched and unchanged. If we were using upward compression, it would kind of be the opposite. Everything below the threshold would be turned up. On the contrary, for the release, you ask yourself how long you want to wait to stop compressing after the sound has gone below the threshold, or once it's gotten quieter. It's really easy to misuse the compressor. For example, if you turn release too high or too slow, it might cause a pumping effect in the sound that you really don't want. This is not the same kind of pumping as sidechain compression. So the attack and release are basically how fast you want to start and how fast you want to stop. So think about things like snares, which are going to have a fast attack and a pretty fast release because the sound doesn't linger for long unless you have some ridiculous reverb. But for things like pads and ambient noises, you might want to have a slow attack and a slow release. Because those sounds usually slowly rise in, and even after the note completes, pads are usually still making noise and coming back down. The ratio determines how much the volume is lowered after the threshold. So, if it's set to 4 to 1, like it is now, for every 4 decibels above the threshold it goes, only 1 decibel comes out. If the ratio is set to 6 to 1, then still, for every 6 decibels that go in, only 1 come out. Watch what happens to the amount of compression when I change the ratio. Anything higher than a ratio of 10 to 1 is considered limiting. 
There are things like brick wall limiters, which have a ratio of infinity to one, which means that no matter what you put in, everything above the threshold is just coming out at the same volume. The knee basically smooths out the ratio that you set at the threshold. So now I'm going to use a different compressor with the same settings to show more what a compressor does to the dynamic range. Now when it's engaged, notice it's limiting all the peaks. And here's another compressor I was messing around with. See, it really contains the song. Again, adding the compressor is the difference between this and this. If you liked my tutorial or have any more questions, just leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.